Okay, hi everyone. I'm uh Shu Changgao from uh from HP Star and the China University of Geoscience. I'm and I'm doing my master with uh, Yan Hao and uh, Wim Wan Mastrini. And today I'm going to talk about the experimental constraints on the origin of lunar high titanium mare basalts. And first we come uh start with the background as uh People may know the proto Earth uh, was impacted by the uh, Mars sized uh, planet named Theia, and then uh, the accretion disk formed. And uh, uh, from this process, we got our proto lunar. And uh, the gene impact also led to a large amount of heat. So the lunar upper mantle, or even the lunar whole mantle, uh, melted and it became to be the lunar magma ocean. However, with the time goes down, uh, the lunar magma ocean began to cool down and crystallize. And at last, we got uh, the chemically different acid mantle uh, that contains by different kinds of minerals. For example, uh, the deepest uh, area is uh, olive and the uh, shallower depths would be some uh, ammonite or quartz. So, uh, among all the lunar sample return missions, we found that the Apollo 11 and Apollo uh, 17 sample are, have extraordinary high tide features. So, for example, we can see the uh, round circle. Uh, they have a relatively high titanium content uh, compared with some, uh, for example, terrestrial samples. And then uh, we also got some evidence from the s dope that indicate the high type source are directly origin uh, originated from a tie-rich source. So uh, the study is aimed at understanding the origin and the formation mechanism of the lunar high time air source. So for this purpose, we compiled uh, the tie-rich source was the composition of the terrish source. So here is uh, the, we compiled some uh, terrish source constrained by the previous experimental uh, experiment. So, uh, and then we also consider the other factor that uh, the pleasure case and the terrish source will be something uh, in perfect separation during the crystal, uh, the crystallize process. So, uh, we select the first one uh, from Lean and as our the first starting combination and we add five percent or and ten weight percent plagio place into it and then become the second and the third combination of our study. So using these starting combinations, we perform some high pressure and high temperature experiments using the patient cylinder device. So here is uh, our running conditions. We assume uh, they are originate from a relatively low pressure and we perform a series of different temperatures. So here is some, oh, uh, sorry. Oh uh, yeah, here is some of our experimental products. Uh, there are some representative BSC image. So after all the experimental process, we compared our experimental mild with the uh, natural samples that we have mentioned before, the high type results from the Apollo 11 and Apollo 17. So we can see that some enlarged points, uh, it means our key, po key, key experiment. So uh, they are broadly consistent with the natural samples. Uh, I mean that our experimental results are uh, consistent with the natural sample, so uh, we can uh, say that this process can be the uh, uh, considerable or reasonable pathway to generate the major uh, elements for the Apollo high type source. And the right part is the, uh, we compared the temperature uh, range from our key experiment. And in this temperature range, the partial melting uh, proportion is between maybe 30 to 50. So 
uh, uh, we know that uh, the process is a complicated one. So we also tried to model the rare earth element to find whether this way is also a, a proper to guide the natural samples pattern. So we found that to produce a rare earth pattern, uh, to produce a rare earth element pattern of high type source, we have two ways to do that. Uh, the first way is like the blue line, uh, we can perform a low degree partial melting of the tire rich source. Uh, and we trapped with one to 2% creep. Uh, creep means the uh, rare earth element enriched uh, component. Yeah. And we started with a, a tronic uh, initial pattern like the uh, orange line shows. And actually we found uh, like the no says it's just 6% of partial melting and it's not very uh, familiar or consistent with our previous major element uh, experiments. So there is also the second way to form the right pattern of the high type cells that we start with the uh, modest degree partial melting of a tyrich source and we trapped with six, uh, six or seven creep. And this time we start with a uh, IORE depleted initial part like the uh, purple line shows. And actually we found that uh, uh, the results was being uh, was plotted by the green line. So we can see actually the Europe, uh, European uh, anomaly is deeper than the natural sample. However, we believe or we argue that uh, this process can be solved by the uh, that the rebalance between the mild, our experimental mild and the surrounding uh, surrounding European ridge gradual case during the eruptional process. So uh, this is also the right way to do this. So uh, for the, uh, after the major element and the rare earth element constraint, we per uh, we reveal our results and we plot the temperature uh, and the titanium content relationship. And we can see the uh, to guide a right uh, range of titanium content, uh, the temperature is between the around 1180 to 1250. So this is consistent with this around uh, previous impact model temperature that is around uh, 1210 to 1240. So uh, we plot the illustration to uh, to confirm or to say the eruptional process to form the uh, high time air salt. We say the remained element bearing cumulate remounted after the impactor heating and the high time magma flow eruption, uh, the uplifted, and we got the uh, lunar samples return, uh, the return the lunar samples that, uh, as we see in the high time episode. So, uh, at last, we I want to repeat our conclusion. Uh, the first conclusion is the uh, high, uh, the shallow depths are meant bearing cumulated to be a main source for the lunar high time episode. And, the remounting of the shallow IBC can be caused by the impact. So uh, that's all about my talk. Thanks for attention.